all right guys wes here welcome back to the channel so as you know hogwarts legacy was one of the biggest games of 2023 which was recently confirmed by warner brothers themselves it sold 22 million copies and in a year of awesome games hogwarts legacy stood out as an example of licensed games done correctly and it propelled the developer avalanche software into mainstream relevancy but recently there were some statements made by warner brothers interactive in response to the sales success and if you're a fan of hogwarts legacy and the entire harry potter ip you're gonna want to hear all of this so today we're going to cover all of the latest hogwarts legacy news and harry potter news in the gaming world we have a lot to talk about in this video so check the chapters for easy viewing don't forget to enter the ps5 giveaway at 150,000 subscribers and without further delay let's get started now you may have heard this first piece of news already because it was a pretty huge deal but it was recently confirmed by warner brothers that over 22 million copies of hogwarts legacy have been sold in the year 2023 meaning it's very possibly the best-selling game of the entire year it's been a long time since the best-selling video game of the year wasn't a rockstar game or the next installment of a call of duty game and the fact that this record was set by a brand new ip is a massive achievement now in case you didn't know warner brothers reportedly didn't expect hogwarts legacy to sell nearly as well as it did and the final sales numbers were more than double their projections were suggesting to put it simply hogwarts legacy is what you get when you respect a beloved ip and put a ton of love and care into a project instead of rushing it out the door to make some quick cash obviously hogwarts legacy is not a perfect game there's a lot of room for improvement especially whenever it comes to a sequel but for the game that it is Hogwarts Legacy is a fantastic game that absolutely deserves its success and hopefully other publishers take note of this and start giving their licensed games the kind of love and care that's needed to replicate this success I really hope the team over at Xbox and Machine Games have seen the success with Hogwarts Legacy and they try to replicate that with Indiana Jones now in terms of Hogwarts Legacy being the best-selling game of 2023 the only potential wrench that could be thrown into it is the Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. As of recording this video, Nintendo hasn't confirmed the sales numbers for it, but unless Tears of the Kingdom managed to sell over 22 million copies last year, Hogwarts Legacy is going to remain the top dog of 2023. And even if Zelda does kick it off its throne, it's still finishing at the number two spot, which is something to be proud of, especially for the team over at Avalanche Software that I feel like deserve a lot more credit than they're getting at this current moment. Now, like I briefly mentioned before, the president of Warner Brothers Interactive Entertainment had an interview with Variety not too long ago, and he said, some pretty interesting things about the future of the publisher and WB's goals in general. Now, during the interview with Variety, WB Interactive President David Haddad expressed how proud he and everyone at the company were of Hogwarts Legacy. He said, and I quote, it's not just the units sold that I'm proud of, it's just that it delighted the fans so much. It brought Harry Potter to life in a new way for gamers where they could be themselves in this world and this story. And that's what the team at Avalanche set out to do when they were developing the game. And I think that's really why it resonated so well well and it remains the best-selling game of the year in the entire industry worldwide he said that's a position that typically is held by one of these incumbent sequel games and we're so proud that we've been able to break into the top ranks a dad also mentioned in this interview that another team is hard at work on the upcoming quidditch game and they're excited for fans to see it especially now that they know there's such a passionate harry potter fan base in the world of gaming now it shouldn't have to be said that warner brothers kind of turned their back on the harry potter ip during the 2010s and it's honestly kind of a miracle that the Hogwarts Legacy game came out at all, especially whenever you look at the context of the company paying the bills. Following the conclusion of the original movie run, WB tried to keep the Harry Potter ball rolling with the Fantastic Beasts series, which honestly I thought started off really strong, but quickly lost the public's interest and failed to really impress at the box office. During the 2010s, Warner Brothers slowed down on the new Harry Potter merchandise and projects aside from the theme parks, and it started to look like the IP was going to sit dormant for the most part. Hogwarts Legacy was greenlit in 2017, the project was leaked in 2018 and then the reveal trailer happened in 2020 but by the time 2022 came around they abandoned the fantastic b series and would go radio silent on almost everything related to the harry potter ip outside of hogwarts legacy that was cooking during all of that time so despite the hype of the reveal trailer the project was still seen as a bit risky and of course the skepticism amongst many gamers and journalists were at an all-time high so the fact that avalanche was still able to pull this game off despite all of the challenges they faced was kind of a miracle following the runaway success of the game though warner brothers has seemingly recommitted to the harry potter ip it's since been confirmed that there's a new hbo series adaptation in the works and potentially even a few new movies on top of some expansions coming to the wizarding world theme parks obviously hogwarts legacy wasn't the only factor in this new commitment to harry potter from warner brothers but many insiders and analysts believe that it played a very large part in it the fact that a harry potter game sold 20 million copies in less than a year during a time where warner brothers was 
was putting very little effort into the IP is a huge deal and a massive shakeup for the publisher. So mark my words, you're going to be seeing a lot of new Harry Potter projects announced over the next two years. And a lot of them are going to be directly thanks to the success of Hogwarts Legacy. Now, whenever it comes to the future of Harry Potter games, we know about, and some of you guys have played Quidditch Champions, which has the potential to be one of the biggest live service games in the world if they handle that game correctly. Now, in addition to that, there's been a ton of rumors of some kind of Harry Potter MMO in development, as well as a Harry Potter horror game. Although I'm not sure how much I believe on that one. The horror game rumors came from a very credible source who has leaked several Harry Potter things correctly in the past, but I'm not sure Warner Brothers would sign off on a horror game set in this universe. But then again, it's possible that this horror game is actually just a darker and more mature game than Hogwarts Legacy. Now, on top of that, we know that there's a sequel to Hogwarts Legacy in the works and Avalanche Software is going to be building it on Unreal Engine 5, which is going to look awesome, but that's probably still a few years away from a reveal. So yeah, from everything that we've heard from Warner Brothers, it sounds like the Harry Potter and the Wizarding World IP is back to the forefront of their thought, which honestly is only a good thing for us gamers. With that, I'm sure we're going to get some live service stuff like Quidditch Champions and some mobile projects. But as long as we get a few good single player games out of the mix, I'll be perfectly fine, especially if we get a Hogwarts Legacy sequel. And honestly, I would be totally interested in a horror game if it's one that's actually done right. Honestly, one thing that would be pretty cool is if we got a Harry Potter game where you were able to be the villain. That's one of the aspects in the modern gaming world that isn't done quite enough. Let us be the villain, create our own horcruxes and be the ultimate dark wizard. It's similar to Star Wars. Like, of course I want to be a Jedi, but there's also some times that I want to be Darth Vader. So let me be Darth Vader or Voldemort. Now, of course it can't be one of my videos without talking about the prospects of a DLC, but there isn't much new that we can say about it. Warner Brothers may be committed to the Harry Potter IP and they may be really stoked about the success of Hogwarts Legacy, but I don't think anything that's been said by Warner Brothers or Avalanche in the last few months has suggested that we're any closer to a DLC than we were before. I think it's great that the Harry Potter IP is getting more love than it did before, but if you're looking at this from a WB perspective, they're probably just more eager to get projects out the door as opposed to adding on to the stuff that people have already purchased. I don't think a DLC is completely out of the question, but I seriously doubt that it's very high on the priority list, especially since a Hogwarts Legacy sequel has already been greenlit and Avalanche Software are moving over to Unreal Engine 5, which is going to take some time to get used to, so don't get your hopes too high for a DLC for Hogwarts Legacy, but don't let that discourage you because there's a lot of stuff in the pipeline. Now, you could be like me and still huff on the hopium that a DLC is still possible, especially whenever you look at God of War Ragnarok. The game director, Eric Williams, said that they did not have any plans to do God of War Ragnarok DLC, and then a year later, we got God of War Ragnarok Valhalla. So needless to say, I have trust issues whenever it comes to game directors and just game developers in general. Because on one hand, I want to believe that a Hogwarts Legacy DLC is never going to happen because Avalanche has said that they had no plans to do post-launch content. But then you look at this game and it's the most sold game of 2023. And it's just so hard to fathom that they won't be doing any DLC for this game. Like they were essentially saying, no, we don't want your money this time, but get your $70 ready because Hogwarts Legacy 2 is coming out. And that's where we want you to spend your money, which I guess that's something we can appreciate. I would have just loved to see some extra mileage added to Hogwarts Legacy, maybe something or just anything to provide further replayability. I might be alone here, but one thing that we can look forward to still is the fact that the Haunted Hogsmeade quest is going to be available next month for those of you that have an Xbox and a PC and a Nintendo Switch. So if you've only ever played Hogwarts Legacy on those platforms, I guess you're going to get new content next month. For all of us with PS5s, I guess we're just going to have to wait until the sequel to Hogwarts Legacy 2. But what do you guys think about this? Do you think that Hogwarts Legacy 2 is going to get announced before or after some new Harry Potter projects release? Will we see the Harry Potter show get started and the first season release before Hogwarts Legacy 2? Let me know down below. Thanks again for watching this video. If you've enjoyed my coverage, do me a favor and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel with your notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any future Harry Potter and Hogwarts Legacy videos. And until next time, this has been Wes and I will talk to you guys in the next video.